Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Blogging ABCs. I'm one of your hosts, Deborah Carney, and with this episode, we're introducing two additional hosts to our team, and that is Trisha Meyer and Elizabeth Bogg Ababon. How are you guys? Wonderful. Thanks so much for having me now. Great. <laughs> Liz is the quiet one in the bunch, you'll find. Um, <laughs> So in our past blogging ABCs, we've mostly done interviews with bloggers to see how they do things. And Liz and Trisha and I are all bloggers. So I think um, what we're going to do going forward is do more of the basics and help people get started with their blogs and figure out how to structure them. And, you know, we're going to start with more basic topics. And then you can always um, our listeners can always suggest topics for us by going to bloggingabcs.com and leaving comments um, on our on our blog posts and, and on some of the other articles that we'll have posted up there. So today's topic was actually suggested by Trisha, and I think it's a really good one because a lot of people are trying to decide when they are starting a blog, whether it should be a global general blog or whether it should have a little bit more niche of a topic. So Trisha, why don't you start us off? All right. I think this kind of, for me, it came out of the concept that my very first blog was a more general mom's blog. But ever since then, I've gone with those more specific niche blogs. So over time, I've been kind of, you know, comparing back and forth which sites I prefer. And for me, it's come down to, you know, a few different things that I'd like for us to talk about. Um, The first obviously being SEO. I think with my with the more general blog, I might be getting more general backlinks. But for SEO purposes, my niche blogs just kill it. You know, when I've got whatever the topic is in my domain name, plus all of my categories and all of my content is focused around one area from an SEO standpoint, I tend to do much better um, when I go more specific. Right, because you're getting you're getting the long tail traffic instead of, you know, trying to hit words that are going to be harder to get. Um, Liz, you kind of have done the same thing. You've got like general blogs and now you're starting some really, um, really niche blogs within a niche. Well, and I actually started, I, I went niche to general to niche. <laughs> <laughs> I, I started out with the, a very, very, very specific niche um, website that wasn't meant to um, get SEO and didn't need it in order to grow and then to get into more blogging I, I got a more general website and then now am going more targeted because it's easier to get traffic to a more targeted site than it is a very general site and that goes for even if, it, you know, you've got the SEO benefits for one thing, because instead of having a top layer of categories and then another layer and then a third layer before you get to your topic, your top level is what you want to talk about to begin with. And you've got um, Google doesn't have to go as far or the other search engines don't have to go as far and your and your site visitors don't have to dig as far to find what they want to find out about. So even from like a social media perspective, you know, if you have an RSS feed that people are, that you're putting into a a Twitter account or feeding to a Facebook page, if it's too general and too mixed up, people kind of lose what you wanted them to hear about. Mm -hmm. But then on the flip side, I think if you're not looking to get your traffic from SEO, if you're looking to have one site that you can print on your business cards and that you can put on T-shirts and wear around at conferences or at the ball field or whatever, then I think maybe you want to look at, at a general site. You know, when you have so many niche sites and somebody says, what's your website? Yeah. <laughs> you're not going to stand there and, you know, rattle off 12 domain names to them because that's what you logged on just today. So it's kind of nice to have that general site where you can just say, you know, this is my site. And then they go there and you don't have to worry about, you know, lots of different domains. So if you're, you know, if you're relying more kind of on actual word of mouth traffic or your like publicity materials and offline marketing, think maybe having the more general site is better yeah that's true and it also it depends on what you want to talk about 
Like if you start, you know, like the NIST site that Liz started is something that she really is passionate about and she wants to write about. Um, you know, if you're uh, a mom that's blogging or a dad that's blogging, I want to leave the dads out. Um, and you start a general site and then you realize that a lot of your time and energy is being spent on one topic and it's being diluted by thinking you need to talk about other things, you can like make a satellite site and link to it from your general blog. Uh huh. So aside from traffic, I think the second other big thing are your monetization options and whether you know, you're blogging because you just want to generate a lot of content and you're blogging because you love to blog about that specific area or if the blog that you're putting up is because you want to monetize and you know you're you're doing it more for the affiliate marketing aspect than just the pure article generation and i think the monetization is very different you know when you have a very specific niche site you can only work with a small number of merchants you know right. so whatever your niche is you may have a lot of other affiliate managers that you would love to work with or merchants that you love but if they don't fit on the site, there's absolutely nothing you can do without putting a lot of irrelevant stuff on the site and then making it look bad. Um, on the flip side, with the more general site, you know, you have a lot of a broader range of ways to monetize that site. And in addition to having a lot of ways to monetize that site, though, it's again, it goes back to the content. If it's too general, are the ads going to get lost and you're going to have too many? Right. Or are you going to, and this can be, you know, like a topic for another day to delve into more deeply is, you know, are you going to build a site specifically around one product or one type of product? Um, well, actually, we can talk about it because you, you actually did a, a presentation at Affiliate Summit where you talked about pop culture. Uh -huh. And I'm assuming, I, di I didn't get to see it yet. <laughs> I was working in another area of Affiliate Summit, and even though this is blogging ABCs, there's a lot of affiliate crossover because we know people want to monetize their blog. Right. Um, you talked about pop culture, and what I'm assuming that you told people was about how to build a site that capitalized on some things in pop right. culture. Right, and we focused, you know, in in that seminar, focused basically on the coming up with, you know, Twilight was my first one, and just, you know, focusing on Twilight, all Twilight products, and, you know, from an SEO standpoint and a link standpoint, um, I rank really well, and I have a lot of products that I can promote on that site, but I also can only promote Twilight products, so a lot of times affiliate managers will come to me and say, well, you know, you're, you're, demographic is, you know, young adults, so why don't you also promote these things over here? And I'm reluctant to do that because I feel like if it's my Twilight site, everything I put on there is going to be Twilight so that I don't start pushing away my readers. Okay. So I love, you know, when I have a niche that there are a lot of products that I can put on there, it's great because then they tend to convert really, really well. And I think what you were saying about the general site is true. I don't think conversions are nearly as high for me on my general site for my affiliate links because you never know, you know, whether people, whether it's really stuff that they want or not. Okay. Yeah, that makes total sense. So let's say you're a blogger that's just starting out. Would you recommend that they go with a general site that covers a lot of topics and then figure out what they like and build niche sites from that? Or do you recommend they go Liz's route, which was build a niche site and then see if they feel like they need a more general site? You know, I honestly am not sure. I really think it comes down to things that you need to think about, you know, the number of topics that you're going to have, you know, are you blogging about something because you just want to kind of vent about it? Or is it something that is truly a life issue about which you can continue to blog all the time? If you think that you can put out a couple of posts every week indefinitely, and if you sit down and you make a list and you can come up with, you know, you should be able to come up with at least 35 or 40 different ideas before you have a niche site. Okay. If you can only come with uh, come up with maybe 10 or 15, you probably need something a little bit more general um, so that you can have other topics that you can work into it. I, I like that. I like that as a good rule of thumb because like with your Twilight sites, she's always got, there's, there's new books, there's new movies, so you can keep building on it. It isn't just, oh, this happened and I built the site, now I have nothing else to talk about. Right. 
Right. Um, and I think the other thing is also considering the extent to which you do and don't want to monetize. I think that, you know, when you're building that site, you need to consider, is this a site where I'm blogging just to get things out, just to get information out, just to link to other sites, you know, that have relevant information? Or is this a site that I truly want to monetize, you know, to be kind of part of my um, stable of sites that I'm making a living off of? Okay. Now, Liz, yours went, like you said, the other way, and we can tell people what your site is about. You know, you started out with a site about beauty pageants because you've been involved in that and there was no community available and you wanted a place for directors of these various pageants to be able to come and get information and share information. Right. We, yeah, we, um, in the the pageant world, there just, there isn't anything for people where they can actually speak and be comfortable with speaking to each other and keeping things positive. So for me, that niche was a no brainer because of the fact that it's what I'm very passionate about and and very much involved in. So, um, you know, going from there, I decided that I wanted something more general to blog about so that I did have something to just kind of just throw stuff out there. And it really, I think it depends on if you have something that you're you know, totally passionate about that you want to blog about. I mean, everywhere I go now, people, people know me as you know, that website. So it's like, I've built a name for myself in that community, but it's very specific. So, um, and it's also very hard to monetize. There's like nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you have to get creative. If you're gonna if you're gonna have a niche site, you have to to be creative in in looking at how things can be linked to your website. Um, you know, it, for example, with pageantry, there's a lot of crown stuff out there in order to monetize with, but also you know, cosmetics and clothing because what are these girls using when they compete? They're using cosmetics and clothing and hair products. And so um, it's been about educating a lot of merchants too as to, to how it can work for them to be involved in that industry. Yeah, that was, that was pretty tough for a while because a lot of uh, managers, affiliate managers were basically saying, I don't think it'll work here. And, you know, one of the things that Liz looked into is selling advertising instead of having um, affiliate links, because a lot of the companies that you wanted to work with didn't have affiliate programs. And they still don't. Um, You know, they there are a lot. And that's another thing to consider when you're starting a niche site is which, you know, how what is the best way to monetize your site? Is it to build your rankings so that you can go out and sell advertising um, as opposed to monetizing through affiliate marketing or, you know, are you going to use a combination of the two or, you know, what, what works best for your niche as far as monetizing it? Trisha, do you have any sites that you sell advertising on or yours most affiliate marketing based? Mine are pretty much all affiliate marketing based. I've sold some spots before, um, but it because it's not something that I do primarily, I try to kind of stay away from it. You know, I think I have so many different sites, like, you know, I'm sure both of you do, and probably a lot of our <laughs> listeners, um, so many different sites that it's easier for me just to stay on one track and not do too much of the other. Okay. Well, and again, for people who are just starting out, you don't have to have a lot of sites. You can, like Trisha said, you can start with one general site. And then if you find you're talking about something a lot or that your traffic is a little, your traffic isn't really paying attention to what you want to sell them on the general site and you think you can develop an additional site, then go into additional site. Don't start your blogging plan with, I'm going to start five sites because I don't think I'm going to be able to sell things on this one or this one. You know, do one site see how it works, and then decide if you want to branch into a different version or uh, manage a second site or a third site. Absolutely. And, you know, the one other thing about doing the niche sites is that I think 
once you have the experience with one, then it's a lot easier to replicate going forward. You know, you figure out which WordPress theme you really like, and then you learn to just customize the colors in your CSS for the next site. Or you learn where you like to put the video, you know, and which sidebar and how many columns you like. And so once you get a niche site down where you start seeing that you're getting some rankings, that your traffic that's coming in is converting, even if it's not a lot of traffic, but the small amount that is coming in, you know, you're getting good comments, you're getting good links back, or you're, you know, you're getting sales conversions, whatever it is that you're looking for, then you can start going out and replicating that quickly. And it could be that it only takes you three or four hours to launch an entirely new niche. And then as you expand like that, um, you're not risking as much. You know, you're only wasting the cost of the domain name and three or four hours of your time versus doing an entire new general site, which is going to take you a lot longer. Very good. Very. That's awesome advice. Um, I think that 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 was really um, will help some people focus or decide. And as you have questions, um, post them in the comments uh, to this podcast, and we'll try to address some of your specific um, comments in future episodes. Liz, do you have any final thoughts? Um. <laughs> Not really? Not really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Trisha, any? Uh, just that I would really love to hear some feedback, some comments from our listeners as to which they prefer or, you know, if they're kind of, you know, like me that I think there are pros and cons for each. I'd really like to hear, you know, other people's arguments if they feel that one is superior over the other or that new people should start with one over the other. I'd like to hear their reasons for that just out of curiosity. Okay. And if they drop their links in our show comments, they're followable links, so you'll get a backlink. So, all right. Um, Well, I think that's about it for for our first podcast. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed it. Um, Liz, where can people find you on Twitter? Uh, Team Loxley Liz. That would be twitter.com slash Team Loxley Liz. Trisha? I'm at Sunshine Trisha, T-R-I-C-I-A. Okay, awesome. Um, and you can find me at twitter.com slash Loxley, L-O-X-L-Y. And our show is hosted by geekcast.fm, to whom we're very grateful. And they have a lot of podcasts about, um, <clears throat> about. I'll edit that part out. <laughs> <laughs> they have a lot of podcasts about uh marketing in general and things that you know you bloggers can go to to learn how to make their sites better um you can find if you heard us on itunes you can go find our blog posts at bloggingabcs.com and we'd love to hear what you have to say thanks everybody and have a great day you too thank you thank you